Welcome. Patent strabismus, vertical strabismus, and torsional strabismus have similar underlying causes, chiefly dysfunction of the cyclovertical muscles. In this session, we will be describing patent strabismus and we will be taking up vertical strabismus and torsional strabismus in the subsequent sessions. Since patent strabismus, vertical strabismus, and torsional strabismus have similar underlying causes, they often coexist. A patent strabismus is defined as a horizontal strabismus, either an isotropia or an exotropia, in which horizontal deviation vary between the primary position, straight up gaze position, and straight down gaze position. So here we see that the horizontal deviation in the straight up gaze position, the primary position, and the straight down gaze position are different. In this session, the diagrams will not be depicting the underlying horizontal strabismus, either isotropia or exotropia, and will only show the variation in horizontal deviation in straight up gaze, primary position, and straight down gaze. So, two important points as regards patent strabismus are the underlying strabismus is horizontal, either isotropia or exotropia, and the variation in the horizontal deviation is considered in the straight up and straight down gaze positions and the primary position. We may note here that for describing patent strabismus, we do not consider the deviation between the two eyes in lateral gaze positions. In contrast, as we will be seeing in this session and in the next sessions, for vertical strabismus, the deviation between the two eyes in lateral gaze positions is important to consider. 15 to 20 percent of horizontal strabismus patients have an overlying pattern deviation also. To detect a pattern strabismus in a patient with horizontal strabismus, after full correction of the refractive error, the horizontal deviation is measured at distance with prism and alternate cover testing in the primary position and in straight up and straight down gaze positions with the straight up and straight down gaze positions being 25 degrees away from the primary position and more than 10 prism diopter discrepancy in horizontal deviation in straight up gaze and straight down gaze positions is considered significant for A, Y or lambda patterns and more than 15 prism diopter discrepancy in horizontal deviations in straight up gaze and straight down gaze positions is considered for V pattern. If pattern strabismus is detected, it is important to detect oblique muscle overaction. This is because oblique muscle overaction is an important cause of pattern strabismus and the presence or absence of oblique muscle overaction in a pattern strabismus determines the treatment necessary for the pattern strabismus. To detect oblique muscle overaction, the position of the adducted eye as compared to the abducted eye in lateral gaze position needs to be noted and if the adducted eye is over elevated as compared to the abducted eye, the adducted eye has inferior oblique overaction and if the adducted eye is over depressed in comparison to the abducted eye, the adducted eye has superior oblique overaction. We will first describe the various patterns along with their causes and associations and then describe the etiology of pattern strabismus in general. In a V pattern strabismus, there is more exotropia or less isotropia in straight up gaze as compared to the primary position and the primary position in turn has more exotropia or less esotropia as compared to the straight down gaze position. So making a V pattern. V pattern is the most common pattern strabismus and can occur with infantile isotropia. V pattern in infantile isotropia is due to inferior oblique overaction and because inferior oblique overaction in infantile isotropia has an onset in the first or second year of life, the V pattern in infantile isotropia is seen after first or second year of life. V patterns can also occur with bilateral superior oblique palsies, Brown syndrome in which there is restriction of the superior oblique tendon and in craniofacial anomalies. 
In craniofacial anomalies, V pattern is the most common pattern strabismus and can be found in patients with Curzon and Apert syndrome due to an excyclorotated position of the muscle pulleys. In these entities, associated excyclotorsion of the eyes is often also found and in craniofacial anomalies with slanted palpebral apertures, V pattern may be found if the lateral canthus is located at a lower level than the medial canthus. In A pattern strabismus, esodeviation is more or exodeviation is less in straight up gaze as compared to the primary position and in turn exodeviation is less or esodeviation is more in primary position as compared to the straight down gaze position. So making an A pattern. A pattern has been found in patients with exotropia, spina bifida and also craniofacial anomalies due to in rotation of the muscle pulleys. A pattern can also be seen with slanted palpebral apertures in which the position of the lateral canthus is above the medial canthus. In a Y pattern strabismus, the horizontal deviations between the two eyes in the primary position and in the straight down gaze position are almost similar, but the horizontal deviation between the two eyes in the straight up gaze position is more exotropic or less isotropic as compared to the horizontal deviations in the primary position and in the straight down gaze position resembling a Y. Y pattern is also called pseudo overaction of inferior oblique muscle because Y pattern resembles a V pattern but overaction of the inferior oblique muscle is not actually present. Y pattern is said to occur due to cranial disinnervation in which there is abnormal innervation of the extraocular muscles congenitally and the cranial disinnervation in Y pattern strabismus leads to the lateral rectus being activated when the patient attempts up gaze with the overacting lateral rectus muscle causing excess abduction in straight up gaze. In Y pattern strabismus there is no over elevation in adduction in horizontal lateral gaze because the inferior obliques are not overacting. But over elevation in adduction does occur when the eyes are in the up gaze position. Since overactions of superior and inferior oblique muscles are absent in Y pattern strabismus, there is no fundus torsion, no vertical deviation discrepancy with right and left head tilts and no over depression in adduction in patients with Y pattern. In X pattern strabismus, the horizontal deviations between the two eyes in straight up gaze and in straight down gaze positions are more exotropic and less isotropic as compared to the horizontal deviation in the primary position resembling an X pattern. An X pattern usually occurs with long standing exotropia and occurs due to contracture of the lateral rectus muscles in long standing exotropia. In an X pattern strabismus, when an eye in an adducted position moves slightly above or below the horizontal, there can be either over elevation or over depression of that eye. So there is apparent or pseudo overaction of both the superior and the inferior oblique muscles of either eye in X pattern strabismus. But since oblique overaction is not present in X pattern strabismus, torsion does not occur. In lambda pattern strabismus, the horizontal deviations between the two eyes in the primary position and in the straight up gaze position are similar. But the horizontal deviation between the two eyes in the straight down gaze position is more exotropic or less isotropic as compared to the deviation in the primary position or in the straight up gaze position. So a lambda pattern resembles an inverted Y pattern and it is considered to be a rare variant of A pattern strabismus and is thus usually associated with over depression in adduction. As we will be discussing next, superior oblique overaction causes both an A pattern and over depression in adduction. After discussing the individual patterns, we will be discussing the etiology of pattern strabismus in general. The most important cause of pattern strabismus is oblique muscle dysfunction. Superior oblique overaction causes A pattern strabismus along with over depression in adduction and encyclotorsion. 
So this diagram represents a patient with superior oblique overaction in both the eyes. We find an A pattern strabismus between straight up gaze primary position and straight down gaze positions. And in the lateral gaze positions, we find over depression of the adducted eye signifying overaction of the superior oblique muscle. Superior oblique overaction also causes intorsion of the eyes. We note here that the pattern is described in the straight up gaze primary position and straight down gaze positions but the overaction of the oblique muscles is noted in the lateral gaze positions of the eyes. In inferior oblique overaction, we get V pattern strabismus along with over elevation in adduction and excyclotorsion. So this diagram represents a patient with inferior oblique overaction and we find a V pattern between the straight up gaze primary position and straight down gaze positions. And in the lateral gaze positions, we find over elevation of the adducted eyes signifying overaction of the inferior oblique muscle. There will also be excyclotorsion in a patient with inferior oblique overaction. Here also we note that the pattern strabismus is described in the straight up gaze primary position and straight down gaze positions and the overaction of the oblique muscle is described in the lateral gaze positions. We also note that as we have discussed in the very beginning of this session, pattern strabismus, torsional strabismus and vertical strabismus can occur together because the underlying cause is the same oblique muscle dysfunction. And the pattern strabismus due to oblique muscle overaction is related to the abducting and the torsional effects of the oblique muscle overaction on the globe as we will be soon discussing. The second important cause of pattern strabismus is heterotopy of the muscle pulley system. Abnormal position of the horizontal rectus muscle pulleys which can be shifted superiorly or inferiorly or abnormal position of the vertical rectus muscle pulleys which can be shifted nasally or temporally can change the path of muscle action. And with this altered path of muscle action, the action of the horizontal rectus and the vertical rectus resemble oblique muscles. Heterotopy of the muscle pulley system explains V pattern strabismus in downward slanting orbits in which the lateral portion of the orbits are located at a lower level than the medial portion of the orbit due to excyclorotated position of the muscle pulleys and can also explain A pattern strabismus in upward slanting orbits in which the lateral portion of the orbit is located at a higher level than the medial portion of the orbit due to encyclorotated positions of the muscle pulleys. The pattern strabismus caused by oblique muscle dysfunction is due to their torsional effects on the globe. Ocular torsion results in displacement of the insertions of the vertical rectus muscles. Extortion results in lateral displacement of the superior rectus insertion and medial displacement of the inferior rectus insertion resulting in a V pattern. The V pattern strabismus can be explained by the superior rectus now becoming an abductor and the superior rectus becoming stretched and the stronger in abgaze and the inferior rectus now becoming an adductor and becoming stretched and the stronger in downgaze. Similarly, in torsion results in lateral displacement of the inferior rectus insertion and medial displacement of the superior rectus insertion resulting in A pattern strabismus. This A pattern can be explained by the superior rectus now becoming an adductor and is stretched and thus strengthened in up gaze and the inferior rectus now becoming an abductor and is stretched and thus strengthened in down gaze. Other causes of pattern strabismus include horizontal rectus restriction and as we have discussed restriction of lateral rectus muscle occurs in long standing large angle exotropia which results in X pattern strabismus. Cranial disinnervation which as we have discussed results in Y pattern strabismus and pattern strabismus can also arise from differential activation of the upper and lower compartments of the horizontal rectus muscles. We have discussed compartmentalization of muscle fibers in extraocular muscles in the session on extraocular muscle anatomy. 
Treatment of a patent strabismus is surgical which is done along with the surgical correction of the underlying horizontal deviation and there are several modalities of treatment of pattern strabismus. When there is over elevation or over depression in adduction signifying inferior oblique overaction or superior oblique overaction, weakening of the overacting oblique muscles is the treatment of choice. If overaction of oblique muscles is not found in the adducted eye in a lateral gaze position, vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscle is performed to correct a pattern strabismus and the horizontal rectus muscle being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal deviation is vertically transposed by half to one tendon width. Medial rectus muscle is transposed to the apex of the pattern and lateral rectus muscle is transposed towards the wider end or the empty end of the pattern in an A or a V pattern strabismus and this can be remembered by a mnemonic MALE for medial rectus, apex of the pattern, lateral rectus and empty end of the pattern. And this formula is followed irrespective of whether the rectus is recessed or resected for correcting the underlying horizontal deviation. So in an A pattern strabismus, the medial rectus muscle being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal strabismus is transposed upwards towards the apex of the pattern and the lateral rectus muscle being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal strabismus is transposed downwards towards the open end or the empty end of the pattern. And in V pattern strabismus, the medial rectus muscle being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal strabismus is transposed downwards towards the apex of the pattern, while the lateral rectus muscle being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal strabismus is transposed upwards towards the empty end or the open end of the pattern. And the effect of this vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscle on the pattern strabismus can be explained as follows. When the medial rectus muscle is transposed inferiorly, it becomes slack and weaker in down gaze making it a weak adductor in down gaze thus reducing the increased SO deviation in down gaze in a V pattern. But when transposed inferiorly the medial rectus muscle becomes tight and stronger in up gaze making it a stronger adductor in up gaze reducing the increased XO deviation in up gaze in V pattern. Similar explanations can be given for the medial rectus transposition upwards in A pattern lateral rectus transposition downward for the A pattern and lateral rectus transposition upwards for the V pattern. This vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscle itself induces a torsion and this torsion tends to neutralize the pattern correcting effect of the procedure. This is clinically important in patients with pre-existing significant torsion due to an oblique overaction and in this situation vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscle worsens the pre-existing torsion and further nullifies the pattern correcting effect of the procedure. So if there is a significant torsion which can be detected by indirect ophthalmoscopy Weakening of the overacting oblique muscle is the treatment of choice for the pattern strabismus and vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscle should not be done. Even in the absence of pre-existing torsion, vertical transposition of both the lateral rectus and the medial rectus muscles during unilateral surgery in the same eye induces significant torsion. And so this kind of a surgery should be done only when bifovial fusion is absent else the patient will have torsional diplopia. Just as horizontal rectus muscle surgery being done for pattern strabismus in an eye with pre-existing torsion can worsen the torsion. Similarly, a patient undergoing horizontal rectus muscle surgery to correct a torsional strabismus in an eye with a pre-existing pattern strabismus may worsen the pattern strabismus. So the important point to note is that if in a pattern strabismus there is overaction of oblique muscle, weakening of the oblique muscle is the preferred procedure instead of vertical transposition of the horizontal rectus muscle because the latter procedure will significantly worsen the pre-existing torsion 
and consequently the pattern stress mass correcting effect of the vertical transposition of horizontal rectus muscles will tend to be nullified. Horizontal transposition of vertical rectus muscle is another option for correcting pattern strabismus but is rarely required because in the absence of overaction of oblique muscles, vertical transposition of the horizontal rectus muscles is usually sufficient for correcting the pattern. But if horizontal transposition of vertical rectus muscle is required, lateral transposition of the superior rectus muscle is done for A pattern and lateral transposition of inferior rectus is done for V pattern because lateral transposition of the superior rectus muscle makes it an abductor and because of stretching and the strengthening of the superior rectus muscle in abgis, this abducting effect of the superior rectus muscle is more prominent in abgis than in downgis, thus reducing isodeviation or increasing exodeviation in abgis in an A pattern strabismus. This explanation is quite similar to the V pattern inducing effect of the superior rectus muscle when the eyes are excyclorotated because of inferior oblique overaction. A similar explanation can also be given for lateral transposition of inferior rectus muscle done for a V pattern strabismus. So in a V pattern isotropia or exotropia, when the V pattern is associated with inferior oblique overaction, weakening of the inferior oblique is the treatment of choice. But if inferior oblique overaction is not present, appropriate vertical transposition of the horizontal rectus muscle being operated on for the underlying horizontal strabismus is done. In A pattern isotropia or exotropia and in also the lambda pattern, when these patterns are associated with superior oblique overaction, weakening of the superior oblique is the treatment of choice. And there are various methods of weakening the superior oblique muscles with the amount of the A pattern they may correct. But if superior oblique overaction is not present, appropriate vertical transposition of the horizontal rectus muscles being operated on for the underlying horizontal strabismus is done. In a Y pattern strabismus, if there is no deviation in the primary position, it does not usually require correction. But if there is an underlying horizontal deviation, superior transposition of the lateral rectus muscle can reduce the Y pattern. As we have mentioned earlier, since a Y pattern is not due to overaction of the inferior oblique muscles, inferior oblique weakening has no effect on a Y pattern strabismus. Since an X pattern strabismus is usually due to a tight lateral rectus muscle in a long standing exotropia, recession of the tight lateral rectus muscles is the preferred treatment modality for an X pattern strabismus. Pattern strabismus is a horizontal deviation in primary position, either an isotropia or an exotropia, in which the magnitude of horizontal deviation changes in the straight up gaze and straight down gaze positions as compared to the primary position. In a V pattern strabismus, if the discrepancy in the measurement of the horizontal deviation between the straight up gaze and the straight down gaze positions is more than 15 prism diopters, then it is considered to be a significant V pattern. Similarly, a discrepancy of horizontal deviation measurements between the straight up gaze and the straight down gaze positions of more than 10 prism diopters is considered clinically significant in the other patterns, namely A, Y and Lambda patterns. Underlying causes of pattern strabismus include oblique muscle dysfunction, heterotopia of the muscle pulleys, ocular torsion, horizontal rectus muscle restriction, cranial disinnervation and differential activation of horizontal rectus muscle compartments. V pattern is the most common pattern strabismus and can be due to inferior oblique overaction. It can be found in infantile strabismus and in craniofacial disorders. A pattern strabismus is the second most common pattern strabismus and can be due to superior oblique overaction. It can be found in exotropia and in craniofacial disorder. X pattern strabismus is found in long standing exotropia and occurs due to restriction of lateral rectus muscles in a long standing exotropia. 
Why pattern strabismus is found in patients with cranial disinnervation disorder? Surgical treatment of A and V pattern strabismus depends on whether overaction of inferior oblique muscle as noted by overelevation in adduction or overaction of superior oblique muscle as noted by overdepression in adduction is present. If oblique muscle overaction is present, weakening of the overacting oblique muscle is the preferred method of correcting an A or a V pattern strabismus. Otherwise, for an A or a V pattern strabismus without overaction of the oblique muscles, vertical transposition of the horizontal rectus muscles which are being operated on to correct the underlying horizontal strabismus in the primary position is performed. Medial rectus muscle is transposed towards the apex of the pattern and lateral rectus muscle is transposed towards the open or the empty end of the pattern which can be remembered by the mnemonic M-A-L-E. X pattern strabismus is treated by recession of the tight lateral rectus muscles and Y pattern strabismus is treated by superior transposition of the lateral rectus muscles. Lambda pattern strabismus is treated like an A pattern strabismus. Thank you for listening.